So we've been learning how to do unit conversions using dimensional analysis. And so far we've done um, single step. Now we're going to do some that require multiple steps. And we're following the same procedure here, but there's just more steps. This is a little bit like crossing a stream. Some streams or creeks or cricks or whatever you want to call them are, are narrow and you can just jump from one side to the other. Others are going to be wider, and there's no way you could jump. You'll end up in the water. But there may be some stepping stones. And so you can go from one bank to a stepping stone to the other bank. A stream like that it will often have lots of different stepping stones. And so there may be different ways you could go. You could go on two or three stepping stones to get to the other side. Someone else may go on just one stepping stone. So there are multiple ways to get from one bank to the other. Okay, just like, you know, if you're Dora the Explorer, there might be multiple ways to get to the snowy mountains. Same idea, though. We have to figure out a path ahead of time. We have to figure out our solution map. And we can't just make something up. Each of these steps has to have a conversion factor that we have access to. So here in this example, we're converting um, a number in centimeters to a measurement in feet. And the path that's written out here is we're going to first convert centimeters to inches and then inches to feet. We know the relationship between centimeters and inches. One inch is 2.54 centimeters. That is available in a table in your book. Also, there's a lot of conversion information in the back cover of your book if you don't want to page through to chapter 2. Um, and then from inches, we can go to feet. This is one that I would expect all of you to know. One foot is 12 inches. Could we convert directly from centimeters to feet? We could if we knew the relationship. I don't know that relationship off the top of my head. We could figure it out, but it's simpler to just do a two-step conversion. So whatever conversion factors you have access to, those are the ones that you can use. Now, in your homework, you have access to the internet, and you could look these up or have some you know, app do them for you. I would discourage you from doing that because you're not going to learn how to do it and you won't be able to use that on an exam. So I would encourage you to stick with conversion factors that are given to you in the problem or given to you in your textbook. Because some of these, they're trying to force you to do two or three steps so that you learn the process. We will need to learn how to do three-step conversions for something called stoichiometry that's going to come up later. And that's a really, really important part of chemistry. If we learn how to do this here, the multiple steps, with units that are a little more familiar, then when we get to stoichiometry, it's not going to be hard at all. But you don't want to have to figure this out there. So you have to have a, a conversion factor for, for each of these transitions. Once you have that map complete, then you just follow it to solve the problem. So let's write on this a little bit. So the map here was centimeters to inches to feet. And that's how you would write that out on your paper. And I encourage you when you're beginning to actually write that out. So how is this equation that is written here, how is that following that? This map, oops. The map here, centimeters to inches to feet, those are the units that go on the tops in the numerators. So there's centimeters, inches, feet. See that? Centimeters, inches, feet. Just like when Dora chants what the map has told her. First we're at the centimeters, then we go to the inches, and then we get to the feet. Centimeters, inches, feet. Sometimes these dumb things just really help. I'm not afraid to be dumb. I don't care what you guys think. Centimeters, inches, feet. 
Okay, then what we're doing here is we want to get rid of the centimeters. So we're going to divide by the centimeters here. Whatever unit is here, we put in the denominator in the first fraction. Then over here, we're going to put inches because inches and inches are going to cancel out. The centimeters and the centimeters are going to cancel out. Yes? That was, the, that was given. So they never actually told you the problem here, which that's not very nice. So I'll write out the problem for you. That's a good question. Convert 194 centimeters to feet. So that would be the question, the problem. Convert 194 centimeters to feet. So here we have where we're starting, and we want to end up with feet. So we put the units in so they all work out. Then we put the numbers in. And remember that what's on the top has to equal what's on the bottom. You can't put the 2.54 on top just because you prefer multiplying to dividing. Sometimes I think that's why students do it. They'd rather multiply. And so I don't know where, where some of this stuff comes up. But it's 1 inch equals 2.54 centimeters. When you look that up in a table to find the relationship, you'll see 1 inch equals... 2.54 centimeters. You can't separate the number from its unit. They go together. So what's in front of the inch? It's a 1. So then I have to put 1 in front of inch. In front of centimeter is 2.54. I have to put that in front of centimeters. Then over here, we want 1 foot and 12 inches. Because it'd be silly to say that 12 feet equals 1 inch. Right? That's ridiculous. With units we're familiar with, we can recognize the ridiculous. 2.54 inches equals 1 centimeters. That might not strike you as ridiculous. I understand that. So we, we got the units all in there, then we put the numbers in, then we do the math. And again, getting this all set up, that's really the hard part. But then there are mistakes that can be made when you enter that into your calculator. So what I recommend doing is going left to right like we read, left to right, top to bottom. So 194 would be times 1 divided by what's on the bottom, 2.54, excuse me, times 1 divided by 12 equals. And your calculator should show you something like that. Now, do you have to multiply by 1? No, you don't. Some of you want to do that, you go right ahead. It's not going to hurt anything. You can also do this 2.94, divide by 2.54, I'm sorry, 194, I said something else. 194 divided by 2.54 divided by 12 equals. Okay. Then we're going to look at our significant figures and round our answer. 194, three significant figures. This is one of those unusual conversion factors that is an exact number between the metric and the English system. So we don't have to think about that one. 12 inches and one foot, that's exact. We don't have to think about that either. So because our initial number had three, then our answer will have three. 6.36, the next digit is a four. So we round down to 6.36 feet. Yes? No, we're not going to count those because those are exact. One foot is exactly 12 inches. So we could say they have infinite, or we can say because it's exact, that's not going to affect it, so we ignore that when we talk about significant figures. So here's a little shortcut for those of you who are really not liking the whole significant figures thing. Most of the time, not all the time, most of the time, however many number uh, significant figures you have in your starting number will be how many you have in the end. Usually in the sorts of problems that they give you in the textbook, in the test bank, anything you'll encounter in this class, usually that's the case. Converting the units does not reduce the number of significant figures. So that's a little 
kind of a cheat that you can use. Doesn't always work, but it'll work most of the time. Any other questions? So let's do some examples. A recipe calls for 1.2 cups of oil. How many liters of oil is this? Now this is one that we could end up with different paths. <coughs> so we read through the question and then we look at the numbers and we're trying to figure out what are we starting with and what are we trying to end up with. Where are we right now and where are we going? Well there's this number 1.2 cups that's the only number in the problem. That's probably where we're starting. So I'm going to put that at the beginning of my map. 1.2 cups. Um, and then what's the question? How many liters? Well, that's a unit. That's probably where we're going to end up. So I'm going to put liters over here on the right side. So I know where I am, I'm on one bank of the river, and I can see where I want to go on the other side. So I could look in the textbook, I could look in my brain, is there a relationship directly between cups and liters? No, there isn't. Pull out my textbook, see if I can look at it without messing anything up here. So important conversion factors in the back of the book. We're measuring volume here. So we're given things like 1 liter equals 1,000 cubic centimeters equals 1.057 quarts. We're given a gallon equals 4 quarts equals 8 pints, which equals 128 fluid ounces, which equals 3.785 liters. There's no mention of cups in there at all. Hmm. So cups is an English unit that gets used in the kitchen. How many cups, well, what's the next biggest unit? A pint, right? How many cups are in a pint? Two. Okay, two cups in a pint. So if I know that, then I could convert cups to pints. If, if we don't know that, and I would not assume that you know that for an exam, but this is just an example. So we know that there's two cups in a pint. Um, now, is pint one of the things that shows up in there? It is. So it shows us um, a relationship between pints and liters. Okay, it says one gallon equals four quarts, which equals four pints. And that equals 3.785 liters. So what I found in the back of the book is that, let me write it down correctly, 8 pints equals, I keep losing it, 3.785. 3.785 liters. I found that. I don't know that off the top of my head, but I found that. That will allow me to convert from pints to liters. The other one that I need is two cups. That's not a two. I don't know how I do that. How do you say two and write one? Two cups equals one pint. For each arrow, for each step, we have to have a conversion factor or we can't do it. So. There are many other ways you could do this. You could go cups to pints to quarts to gallons to liters. There's just a, a variety of things you could do. This is just the one we came across, so this is what we're going to do. Any questions so far? So this might require a little detective work. Okay? Not everything you need is necessarily going to be given to you in the problem. You may have to find information somewhere else. So now we've got our map. Cups to pints to liters. So now I can start writing down the equation. And I'm going to start with cups. 
1.2, that's what I was given, cups. I have two arrows, that means I'm going to have two conversion factors. So I can just write those out. Cups to pints to liters, those are the units that go on the top. Cups to pints to liters. Put the units in first. Dimensional analysis, the units tell us what to do. So I've got the units on the top. I want cups to go away. The way I get cup to go away, because we treat these units like variables in algebra, is we're going to divide by cup here. And cup over cup is 1, goes away. And then in this last one, I want to divide by pint. So that goes away. Any questions? Now, I look at the conversion factors that I found, and I fill in the numbers. Sometimes you'll have to write these down, like the one on top there, 8 pints, is 3.785. I can't keep that in my head. Some of them you may already have in your head, like 2 cups equals 1 pint. You don't absolutely have to write that down. But if you're struggling with this, and you're getting answers wrong, then start writing it down. So for pints and cups, I look at my conversion factor here, this relationship. I want to put the 2 in front of the C. So the 2 is going to go on the bottom. And the 1 is going to go on the top. For the other one, it says 8 pints. Well, the 8 has to stay in front of the pints. And 3.785 is going to go in front of the liters. So I don't have to wonder, am I supposed to multiply? Do I divide? Put the units in. The units tell you where to put the numbers. Now, 1.2 times 1 divided by 2 times 3.785 divided by 8 equals. Let's see what we get. My calculator is showing me 0.283875. The unit there would be liters. Again, if I'm wrong or you think I'm wrong, holler, because I make mistakes all the time. Is that answer reasonable? Okay, let's think, okay, two cups. How much is that? Do you have a two-cup measure at home? It's like a big cup of coffee. Is that bigger than a liter or smaller than a liter? smaller than a liter. So we expect the number here to be less than one, right? It is less than one. So we probably got things in there correctly. What happens when you get your numbers in upside down, which is the most common mistake, is that you're going to go the wrong direction. If we ended up with three liters being equal to 1.2 cups, that doesn't make any sense. A two liter bottle of soda is bigger than a cup. But that doesn't make any sense. So try to use that does it make sense thing. Um, how many significant figures should this have? It should have two. The relationship between pints and cups is exact. This relationship is not exact, but when, they, when you have one like this, the one with the whole number, they're saying, okay, we're, we're comparing this to eight pints, so exactly eight pints is how many liters? And this number has four significant figures. So our, what we started with was two significant figures. And so here that kind of um, cheat or dimensional analysis hack of saying, well, it's got the same as what you started with would work out just fine. So our answer is 0.28 liters. So the 3.785... Those are significant figures? Yes. Because liter is a metric unit, mm -hmm. and pints is an English unit. And with very few exceptions, when you switch systems, it's not exact. Mm -hmm. the, the most notable exception is the inches, centimeters one. And we wouldn't have to know that. Place. I would not expect you to know that, no. But it may show up in the homework. And, and then if you're getting the wrong number of significant figures, you might be, you know, puzzled. Why is my answer not quite right? So it so could show up there. Mm -hmm. So if you stick with the given, <clears throat> with the significant numbers, it should... Most of the time. Most of, okay. most of the time. Most. Okay. You know, and 
that's a lot better than just randomly guessing at the correct you know, number of significant figures. It works most of the time. Any other questions? So, you know, if this was a multiple choice exam and you were looking at answers, obviously the, the correct answer would be there. This answer might be there as well. And if it's asking you for the correct number of significant figures, then you really have to get the correct number of significant figures. But some of them, it's always choose the best answer, right? Choose the best answer. So between this one and that one, which is the best answer? This is the best answer. And I won't intentionally try to trick you like that, but sometimes I overlook things. And so it could end up that both of these are on there as choices. And you say, well, yeah, but that's what my calculator gave me. And I'll come back and say, well, you know, I didn't mean to trick you, but that is the problem. And it does say choose the best answer, and the 0.28 is the best answer. <coughs> Excuse me. Here's another one. A running track measures 1,056 feet per lap. To run 15.0 kilometers, how many laps should you run? And here we're given that one mile equals 5,280 feet. So let's pretend that this was an exam question and we didn't have access to anything else other than what we were supposed to memorize. So here, there are two numbers given, right? So we read the problem, and now we have to pick this apart because we're not going to have purple pancakes or anything like that. We're just going to we're going to deal with this. So, 1,056 feet per lap. That's one of the numbers that's in there, and 15.0 kilometers. And then the question: How many laps? So let's look at the units on these numbers that were given. Feet per lap. If we're writing that down, how would we write that most likely? With a slash, right? Feet per lap. Oops. I would encourage you not, that's what I call a horizontal fraction, which is easier to type but your handwriting. So I would encourage you to write that as a vertical fraction with a horizontal line. 1,056 feet per lap. And the other number is 15.0 kilometers or kilometers. Which one of those looks like it could be used as a conversion factor? The first one. Anytime you're given a number that has per in it, this per that or this over that, feet per lap, just a little red light should go off and say, that might be a conversion factor. That's giving me a relationship between feet and laps. That's saying that every lap is 1,056 feet. That's probably going to be used as a conversion factor and not my starting point. There are exceptions, but generally speaking, the number that has just a single unit, that's where you start. Any other numbers that are given to you, they could be just extra numbers, or they might be needed conversion factors. This is a conversion factor that is specific to this problem. Does every lap equal 1,056 feet? No. There are different tracks. They're going to have different lengths. Okay, if you do a lap around the, around the building, it's not going to be the same, but it's still considered a lap. So that's a conversion factor for this problem. So we're starting with the 15.0, and yes, write the point zero. That's a significant digit. Don't just knock that off. Your calculator doesn't mind, but the sig figs will come out wrong. I'm starting with kilometers, and what, what do I want to end up with? want to end up with laps. So over here, I'm going to put laps. There's not a really a good abbreviation for laps. Can I go directly from kilometers to laps? Nope. Um, 
kilometers. Hmm. Let's see. Sometimes we work forwards, sometimes we work backwards. And sometimes you do a little bit of each. What we're given here is this guy. This relates laps to feet, doesn't it? So if I knew how many feet could I convert to laps, I could use this. So before we get to laps, we need to get to feet. So that's working backwards. Start at the beginning, kilometers two, and you're like, I don't, I'm not sure what I should go to. Don't worry about it. Go to the end, see if you can work backward. Feet. Okay, we're given a relationship there that has feet in it, right? This guy right here, a mile is that many feet. So if we had miles, we could get to feet. Now, I said let's pretend this is an exam question. Well, that's not going to work, is it? Because we don't know the relationship between kilometers and miles. We could not use that mile to feet, and we could do feet to inches to centimeters to meters to kilometers, but we, you don't want to do that, do you? Sometimes when you get desperate, though, it would work. So we need something else. If we look in our handy-dandy important conversion factors chart on the back cover of your book, we see that a mile equals 1.609 kilometers. Let's see, where should I write that? Oh, I'll write that way at the bottom. One mile. And mile is mi because meter is m. 1.609 kilometers. So that's a little tidbit that we would have to have. I wouldn't expect you to have that memorized. But knowing that, we can convert from kilometers to miles. Any questions about how I established that map? You can't have a step where you don't have a conversion factor you can end up with multiple paths. There's multiple ways that you can go from miles to laps for this problem. So now we've got our map, kilometers to miles to feet to laps. And so now we can write out the equation. We'll start on the left here, 15.0 kilometers. I have three arrows this time. So I'm going to have three fractions. The units in my path are the units that go on the top. Kilometers to miles to feet to laps. Isn't that a nice pattern? You get the map, and then all you have to do is follow the map. Getting the map is, requires the most thinking, and then after that, it's just following a pattern. Kilometers to miles to feet to laps. Then we're going to take the previous unit, kilometers, is going to be in the denominator here so that they will cancel out. So kilometers would cancel out. In the next one, I'm going to put miles in the denominator because it was in the numerator previously, and I want them to cancel out. And I put feet down here. Any questions? Put all the units in, then mess with the numbers. So the first one, miles to kilometers. Well, I wrote that guy down here. The 1 goes in front of mile, 1.609 goes in front of kilometers. So 1 mile, 1.609. How many feet and how many miles? What number should I put in front of feet? 5,280. What number goes in front of mile? One. Laps and feet. How many, what number goes in front of laps? One. And in feet? 1,056. Any questions? <coughs> I've got everything in place now. 
I do my calculator. So again, you don't have to multiply and divide by ones, but I'm going to say it just because some people like that. So 15.0 times 1 divided by 1.609 times 5,280, divided by 1 times 1 divided by 1056 equals, and the calculator says 46.6128028 laps. We're going to encounter strings of fractions like this a lot. And if you just always do it the same, then you'll get the right answer more often. Because sometimes we'll, f you know, if you start mixing it up because you're tired of doing it the same old way, then you forget a number. Go left to right, top to bottom. 15 times the top, divide by the bottom. Times the top, divide by the bottom. Times the top, divide by the bottom. Now, sig figs. How many significant figures should the answer have? Three. So we're going to say 46.6 .6 laps. Our initial number had three, and here again it, we end up with ending up with the same. This conversion factor is not exact. Exactly one mile is 1.609, that's four sig figs. This one's exact because it's within the English system. This one is not exact. It's a measurement. One, exactly one lap is approximately 1,056 feet. Any questions? So you got 466. Did you, did you put in 15.0 or did you put in 150? See, there's so many places you can make mistakes. Any other questions? I'll see what's next. Another section.